Hi everyone, uh, another another day um, for Bodo's Kitchen and today I'm going to make, uh, it's a very simple dish. As I said, my kitchen is all about a twist, a tail, everything in 20 minutes typically. Or at least try and cook it in 20 minutes when you do the preparation. Uh, this dish that I'm going to make today is uh, it's a very sentimental dish. It's palak paneer. Uh, palak is spinach. Uh, paneer, of course, is Indian cottage cheese. Not much of a story, uh, but it's emotional to the extent that my first my first time I ever had a meal in a dhaba. Now, all of you Indians would know what a dhaba is. For those of us from not from India, a dhaba is typically a highway inn, if you will. Not an inn, but a highway uh, restaurant, and, and, you know, uh, and it's very rustic, right? Uh, so, and I'm talking uh, this in 1977. So dhaba was not even, it's very fashionable today in India. You know, a lot of places have very fancy dhabas, but this was like way back in 77, I was, traveling with my dad across my home state and you know he said let's have food in the dhaba my dad was a foodie so I'm like I didn't know what a dhaba was so that is the first time I had my first ever meal in a dhaba it was 1977 you're going from Guwahati to a place called Borgang in Assam that is kind of northeast of Assam uh, further away and uh, and one of the dishes you ordered uh, was this palak paneer and that was again for the first time I've had palak paneer because that's not something uh, those days you'd cook at home because of the trouble that you go through of creating all that mesh, uh, the blended uh, spinach. So over the years, I've kept in mind and I thought since I said, you know what, let me do that dish today. So this is the first time I've ever had my meal in a dhaba and the first time I ever had this dish, which is palak pani, which I'm going to replicate today in Bodo's Kitchen. Now, uh, this dish, the first thing is to blanch uh, the 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 spinach right so I've got the spinach here now you know I have, I have been through this dish with a lot of people a lot of chefs that I have eaten over the restaurants or or you know I've asked even in the dhabas how they make it so I've kind of taken all those ways of cooking and kind of made this which I think is the best balanced way to make uh, palak paneer right so I've got hot water boiling here so the blanching process is very simple I'm going to take the spinach and put them there with, and put very little water because the spinach is going to ooze water. So I'm just going to lay the spinach here. Right. Uh, the reason for blanching is very important. Uh, uh, the, sorry, the reason for blanching is because spinach is very iron. It, it has a lot of iron and it has oxalic acid. And because of that, if you don't blanch it, which is what I have I've been told and that's what I've figured it out now, it could be a very, you know, it could give a very different taste in the mouth. Uh, and also oxalic acid could create, if you have excess of it, it creates, uh, I've been told, kidney stones. So safe bet, blanch it. The way to blanch it is hot water, put some salt. Then the idea is to take the water out of the spinach, right? And I'm going to just cover it and let it kind of uh, boil and get heated up for about two to three minutes. Uh, the steps to blanching is while this is happening, uh, it's, it's kind of getting boiled. I've created the, the, the ice bath. And what this is, I'm going to do is once this is done, I'm going to switch it off and we'll take them and put them on the ice bath and then going to blend it, right? So that's kind of the, the blanching process. So I'm not going to go through it because I'm just letting it boil and then I'm going to use a kind of a pincher, something like this, which I have in my kitchen. And I'm just going to pick them up from here and put it into the ice bath and just then cool it down and remove it. That way two things happen. First, the blanching is complete. And secondly, the green color of the spinach gets enhanced. And this is again something, you know, when I was talking to people over the years, uh, different ways of blanching, but this was the most effective way to retain the texture and the color of the spinach, right? I've got my, uh, my spinach blended. I've kind of took it in the ice bath and then I blended it. So it's all ready uh, for the palak paneer or the uh, spinach paneer. Uh, and here are the ingredients. Now again, I have to tell you this, you know, because I'm gonna, I enjoy cooking and it's kind of a hobby. I love it. It takes me out, my mind out of everything else. Over the years when I have this dish, I ask everyone how they make it, right? And then I kind of take it on, take it on, and then finally I decide how what I'm gonna make it. So that kind of gives a little bit of a twist to, to the dishes that I cook, right? not experimental but yet kind of you know like for example the way I, I blanch it and I blend it is, is with the ice bath now it's done by someone it's not done by some people I found it very good so that's why I do it right so same with the ingredients so 
here's the ingredients for the palak paneer. I've got about 200 grams of, of paneer cut into cube size or bite size. I've got uh, one half of a uh, uh, red onion finely chopped or actually I blended it or mashed it because it needs to really get in with the paneer. Uh, half a tomato finely chopped and of course I've got uh, my in the cup fridge I always have this which is minced garlic. That's the, that's the, those are the kind of the um, fresh ingredients and here is the spices. I've got red chili which is basically I use Degi Mirch or Kashmiri Mirch which is you know has color but less of hotness turmeric garam masala cumin seeds and asafoetida hing now I have not generally people don't use hing but I have seen some people use it and I think it gives a very nice flavor so I'm going to use hing so these this is these are the ingredients we're going to come back with my apron and take you through the cooking process very easy to cook hi so uh, you know I've got my my oil heated up I'm using ghee all right about two teaspoon of ghee uh, and uh, again um, you know you can make it in different cooking medium but I found that when you use ghee it really accentuates the uh, uh, the fragrance of, of the dish right so and, and you don't have it every day anyway it's like a once a month dish that goes in the cumin seeds which is the first thing that goes in and as the cumin seed will start to crackle <coughs> I am the garlic because you need to fry the garlic because otherwise it has a raw smell of the garlic which could uh, which is not very pleasant if it's not properly cooked so you're going to get the garlic in <clears throat> wait for the garlic to kind of not really brown out but you know that that raw smell of the garlic goes away I'm going to put in The ground onion, and I want to basically bring it to a, you know, wait for it to get translucent. Okay, wonderful. Now the the water in the of the onion is kind of drying out and it's oozing the oil out, so which is good. So at this stage, I'm going to lower the flame slightly, and I'm going to start adding the dry spices. So I'll go with the hing first. I put the hing, then I put the turmeric. Kind of one three four teaspoon of the turmeric goes in. Uh, the three four teaspoon of the deggi mirch or the kashmiri mirch goes in there the garam masala goes in later so i'm going to hold on to the garam masala and just bring it just cook this a little so that the spices get in and at this stage i'll add a little bit of salt the final salt test again of course later so this is just to kind of glaze the spices so this is kind of done at this stage you know, I can get the scent of the spices as well. At this stage, I'm gonna bring in, put all the tomatoes in, and I will let the tomatoes soak in the spices, all right? All right, the spices are now well done. At this stage, it's a simple thing. I'm gonna take this, the blended spinach, and I'm just lower the flame and put this whole thing there. Right. I'm just going to rinse this off with a little bit of cold water, whatever is there, whatever is there will get in here, so that's it. So that's done, it's very very simple, I'm just going to stir this, now remember this is already blanched, so I'm going to cook this for a little bit, so this is the stage, I'm going to stir it, make sure the spices are well and this I'm going to do my salt test right at this stage I'm going to add the garam masala so kind of one teaspoon of the garam masala will go in here now yeah, that gives that <coughs> nice flavor so I'm going to stir this and I'm going to let it cook a little bit before I add the final step which is the paneer so you know how easy to make this dish right what I'll do is I'll cook this on a timer for kind of three minutes just to kind of you know cook this up it's already blanched so it doesn't need to cook but I'll cook it for three minutes and come back and do the last step of adding the paneer okay the, the three minutes is up this has been kind of simmering for three minutes that's all I need to do now here is the last two steps 
Now this is again something you know people do, people don't, but I think it adds, which is cream. Add a little bit of kind of a one and a half teaspoon of cream. It again adds to the flavor. I'm gonna stir that. I'm gonna raise the flame a little bit, stir that. And now with that done, I'm gonna add the paneer. Right? Just add this paneer. This is now, uh, I'm going to cover it, put the timer for five minutes, and let it simmer, uh, and, and the dish is done. So that's, that's kind of the uh, paneer in uh, less than 20 minutes, palak paneer. Very easy to cook, very healthy. You can keep, make it and keep it. Make a little bit more gravy so you can, you can kind of have it as a soup if you want, right? As a wholesome meal. So that's it. Uh, a, a very emotional dish. First time I ever had this in a dhaba with dad in the late 70s. So uh, I hope you enjoy it as well. Signing off.